So you might have heard of Scotland's whisky boom in the late 1800s and a big reason for this was that French vineyards at the time were struggling. Industrialisation, the invention of the steam engine, it made it a lot easier to transport goods across the Atlantic. But all France seemed to be important was mildew and black rot and lice, and these were decimating the French vineyards. And this meant the aristocrats of French and English society could no longer drink brandy. And these wealthy individuals, they turned to drinking whisky, predominantly blended whisky. Now this led to a massive whisky boom. In the 1890s alone, nearly 40 distilleries opened up in Scotland. But the bubble it did eventually and quite spectacularly burst. And by the 1920s, the same number of distilleries had shut down. And a large reason for this fall from grace can be attributed to just two people, Robert and Walter Pattinson. Now, like their second name suggests, these gentlemen were related, they were brothers, and they took over their family's dairy wholesale business in the late 1800s. But, you know, dairy wasn't really doing it for them. They wanted to turn to more profitable and opulent ventures. So they started their own bottling and blending company in 1887, right at the height of the whiskey boom. Now their business was immediately successful, their Pattinson's whisky just took off and when they put their company on the stock market in 1889 they made nearly £100,000 in profit, which was big money back then. With all this profit the Pattinson's were just throwing money about, so they were investing in a lot of big name distilleries at the time, Glenfarclay, Sobin, Altmore, they were employing way more salespeople than even their bigger competitors and they were spending around 8 million a year in today's money on advertisement in the UK alone. And they had some quite unconventional tactics, like they would train grey parrots to repeat phases like buy Pattinson's whisky, and they would give these parrots to vendors and bartenders to try and drum up business. But the brothers, they didn't just spend money on their business, they had quite expensive tastes themselves, and why not treat yourself, you know? It's not like they were, I don't know, embezzling funds or fraudulently overvaluing their business. The Pattinsons, they wanted people to think they were wealthy. Maybe they thought it would help with business. If you see an affluent individual drinking Pattinsons, you might be more likely to give it a go yourself. So they had big marble clad offices, lavish country estates. One of their favourite tricks was to miss the last morning train from Peebles, their hometown, into Edinburgh, and then at great cost rent a private train to take them to their important business meetings in the capital. But sadly for the brothers, this lavish lifestyle didn't last because, um, eh, turns out they were involved in a bit of the old fraud. Ever since their company went public, the Pattinsons would routinely buy and sell their own shares, artificially increasing their price to way more than they should have been worth. And with this high stock price, they could overvalue their business when talking to banks and moneylenders to receive high loans. But in doing all this, the brothers, they were skating on very thin ice. A wee downturn in the whisky industry in the late 1800s sent the Pattinsons' business crumbling around them. On the 5th of December, 1898, their share price dropped by 55%. Banks, moneylenders, they refused to continue extending their loans, and the company went into liquidation. It was subsequently found that the Pattinsons had overvalued their business by 66.5 million in today's money, and that premium, high-quality Pattinsons whisky, that was actually bought with a barrel Irish whisky, mixed with a pre-existing blend. In 1901, the Pattinsons were sentenced to time behind bars for fraud and embezzlement, but their antics they didn't just affect them. Nine other companies that the Pattinsons did business with collapsed as a result. This led to investors determining scotch is too risky to put their money in. They pulled out funding and this led to an overall downturn in the industry. Scotch consumption dropped from an overall high in 1899 of 160 million litres to only 110 million litres seven years later. Distilleries across the country they were closing at an alarming rate, and no new distillery opened in the 20th century until Tullibardin in 1949. But there was one company that, at least in part, benefited from the Pattinson's crash. They bought a lot of the Pattinson's whisky stock for way below market value, and they were able to weather the uncertain period in the early 1900s. And that business was known as Distilling Company Limited, or as we know them today, Diageo. 
quite interesting to consider. Would the whisky industry still be the same today if it hadn't been for those two fraudulent brothers? Like, for example, would Diageo still own whatever it is, like a third of the industry? But it's just a wee thing to ponder. And if you've enjoyed the video, do give it a like. Subscribe for more whisky content. Subscribe to see what I look like when it hasn't been four months since my last haircut. And uh, yeah, have a good one.